Hi there, it's Nicole here for Honeybee Stamps, and today I'm sharing a Bushel and a Peck card colored with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers with some tips on how to get the great texture on the apples and the basket. When I was coloring this, it was really important to me to find a way to get some great texture with my Zig markers. With Copics, you can kind of use a feathering technique and I wanted to do something kind of similar here, but they are not the same kind of markers at all. Zig markers are water-based and that is going to make it a little bit trickier because they work with water. And so instead of using water, I'm gonna use these straight on the paper, blend them together without the addition of water. And to do this, I highly recommend Bristol Smooth cardstock. Until I got Bristol Smooth cardstock, I was not sold on these markers at all. Once I tried them with Bristol Smooth cardstock, I could not believe how amazingly smooth they go on the paper. You get fantastic results with it. Something else I've been using, and it's kind of new, I've been using Zigs for a while, but I haven't been using VersaFine ink with them and I really highly highly recommend it. It gives you a fantastic black outline and it's nice and crisp. It is a pigment ink so it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. That's why I used my heat tool to heat up and dry that ink so I didn't have to worry about smudging and smearing it. Now what I like to do with my zigs is lay down my dark color first and I am definitely using kind of a flicking feathering type technique here on my basket and then I'm going over that with my lighter color. It's really fast blending but you get some great results especially if you don't over blend. So I am kind of using that same feathering technique with my lighter color and not blending it out like I normally would do. That way I get that great texture for the basket. You can see the bottom area of the basket especially. So I've got my shading, I've got my blending all in one. I just absolutely love that. Plus you can see how beautiful the markers just glide on the paper. I'm gonna finish off the vertical parts of the basket and then around the top instead of going vertically I'm going to go horizontally and do the exact same thing. It's just a much wider strip. These are kind of smaller thinner strip or smaller areas really even though these aren't small images. One thing I love about a lot of the honeybee stamps is they're not teeny tiny. If you really want to give your markers or other coloring tools a good workout, these are fantastic images. No little teeny tiny small areas that maybe are real super tricky to color. Um, you can really practice some fantastic coloring techniques with these markers. I'm going to do a little green band around my bushel basket here. And I am starting with some deep green and I'm going to blend that out with a mid green. This is not a color combination that I've used before and I really ended up liking it. I knew I wanted that deep green color and I needed to find something to blend out with it so it wasn't just a flat straight deep green. And so this is what I tried and I absolutely loved it. Then I'm going to just do some little red accents here around the basket with deep red and pale rose. I'm going to use these same two colors to color in one of my leaves. So starting with my lighter color, blending out with, starting with the darker color rather, and blending with the lighter color. Now the leaves are one of the areas on my card where I decided to opt not for the texture. I went back in and tried to add in that leaf texture and I even tried to go in with some darker colors and I did not like it. I ended up blending it out. I left the leaf as is. It's not going to hurt anything. It's going to be tucked under part of the basket even though the coloring maybe wasn't my favorite. I kept it because it's not a focal point of my card. And I really felt like the texture for the leaves wasn't as important. Now I tried several techniques for coloring the apples. I stamped a bunch of them 
And I did not like the first couple. They were too, they just didn't match the theme of the basket. I wanted the texture. And so I tried on the third one and I liked it, but it wasn't quite right yet. So instead I used the same technique as the basket. I'm going to flick on my red color coming from the top and the bottom. Then I'm gonna go in with mustard. I know that seems kind of crazy and strange, but I really wanted this to look more like a natural kind of apple and have some of those lighter areas. I blended it out then with pale pink. All kind of, it sounds funny, these three colors together, but I really think it works. So here it is again, I went in with red. I'm gonna flick in the mustard color give that texture and then kind of carefully go over it with pale pink to blend out. What ends up happening is you get a much more realistic looking apple this way. Um, I was really happy with this. I feel like the apples, which are part of the focal point of this card, blend and match the basket so much better. So then I just went in with my brown marker and colored in the stems. The apples that were not successful, I actually did need. I needed quite a few apples for the design of my card, so I stamped a few additional ones and colored them in just like these that I've shown you here. Then I'm gonna die cut everything with the coordinating bushel and a peck dies. In fact, I crossed out my apples that I ended up not using. I have a piece of Nina's Smooth White cardstock here, and I've trimmed it to four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna take ground espresso ink and ink up the edges. Almost kind of this sepia tone type look, spotlight. I want the center of my panel to basically stay white. It's gonna be mostly covered up, but I want the edges to be a nice deep dark brown. This is a fall themed car, kind of love you type of card. And when contemplating what I wanted to do for the background, I wanted to do something simple, but something that would help highlight these beautiful bushel and a peck images. So I'm going to keep the ink darkest around the corners and the edges and lighten it as I get to the center. One thing about inking up Nina Smooth cardstock rather than the Bristol cardstock, the Bristol cardstock is going to be very forgiving. You have to be really careful to keep your fingers out of the ink because the ink takes longer to dry and you'll get finger marks in it. Nina cardstock is a little trickier. You get those foam or the uh, tool marks where the foam gets on there if you're not careful and don't use a light enough hand. The more saturated with ink, that the paper gets, the more forgiving it is, but you have to be a little bit careful. So I used a very light hand. I came in off of the side of the cardstock and gradually worked that color deeper and darker. In fact, there's a couple of spots where you can see the foam tool marks. And I just had to be really careful and kind of persevere, blend those out. Much of this is gonna be hidden, so I didn't worry about it too much. So here's kind of what it's gonna look like. The basket's gonna be slightly off center and that's on purpose. I knew that over to one side, I wanted to attach another apple like it fell out of the basket, plus tuck some leaves around both sides of my bushel basket. When I get to this point in my cards, I almost always lay everything out like you see here before I attach it. It's my double check before I start putting adhesive on it, just in case. I have, in the past, gone ahead and started adhering things and found that they didn't fit. So it's kind of just a double check to make sure everything's going to work the way I think it is. Now I attached my background panel to the a uh, white top fold card base. Then I'm going to take a powder tool just along the top edge of the basket. I love that the greeting, I love you at a, a bushel and a peck, fits that little top panel there. I'm gonna stamp that with Versamark ink, sprinkle on some white embossing powder, and then emboss this with white. 
I really felt the white would show up better than maybe just stamping this with a plain black ink. And then I'm just gonna rub any of that powder residue away. The basket I decided to adhere with some foam adhesive strips to pop it up just a little bit, give it a tiny bit of dimension, which is gonna add some nice interest to tuck all these apples down inside of the basket. I'm gonna be kind of careful adhering this to my card because I still need to tuck my apples in the basket and that foam is right there along the top and the edges of the card and I need to tuck some of the elements around the sides. So I'm kind of carefully not pressing my elements down until I have everything exactly where I want them to go because none of the adhesive I'm using here is very forgiving which is good for the finished card, but while you're working on it, you have to be a little bit careful. And I want these apples to be stacked to make it look like it's a really full bushel basket. Once I have my apples arranged the way I want them to be, I'm gonna press those down. And then I added some little white highlights with a white opaque pin. adds a little bit of interest. I will also add some detail on the basket as well. I always love little white pin marks. We'll want to tuck some elements here to the left of the basket. That's why I put, placed it a little off center for some interest and it gives a great place to tuck an apple that fell out of the basket plus some little leaves. Now this leaf just, I decided not to try to peel up the basket and I just trimmed it up just a tiny little bit. And then anything overhanging the card edges, I'm gonna trim off with my scissors. And I really felt like I needed one more leaf along that right corner. So I'll stamp one additional leaf. I'll grab that in just a little bit. On the inside of the card, I'm going to stamp the rest of the sentiment that reads, and a hug around the neck. So the greeting is, I love you, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck. I think it's so cute, perfect, great fall themed, love you type of card. Take a little heart from the stamp set and stamp that with a dark red ink right underneath the greeting. I'm gonna finish my card now. I did stamp and color an additional leaf and I placed it down there along the bottom edge. I'm gonna finish with some of the Honey Bee Stamp Indian Summer Sequins. I love Honey Bee Sequin Mixes. One of the things I love the most is the elements in their sequin mixes layer. They layer so nice. So it's not just straight sequins. You can see some little leaf shape here so if you wanna make little flowers, you can. There's lots of different shapes of sequins. There's some cupped flower-shaped sequins. I used those on another card that I did here a while back. Um, flat sequins, different sizes of sequins. And then my favorite, these little jewels that fit so beautifully inside the center of the sequins and add an awesome little sparkle. I just absolutely adore them. I don't know what it is about the little gemstones, but I think they are super fun. So I'm gonna layer all of these. I used glossy accents to attach them and that is going to finish up my card. So here's what it looks like all finished with the sequins and then open it up and the greeting on the inside. Thanks for joining me today for this Bushel and a Peck card featuring the Honey Bee Stamps, Stamps and Dies of the same name. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.